All right, Billy, thanks for joining us for Thank the you. third uh, Ascension Charity Classic. Just being back in St. Louis overall, what are your thoughts, thoughts on the course? It's just, this is one of our best tournaments of the year. You know, the people come out in groves. It's awesome to have the energy that the, the fans here in St. Louis have, have, have always done, especially uh, the last couple years here. Um, great golf course, it's very challenging. Um, you can just it's just evident by the scores that what you get if you can get to double digits here you have a good chance of winning and um, I haven't played well the last two years here so I'm I'm thinking in my brain that uh, it's time mm -hmm. there's no there's no reason I shouldn't play well here it, it reminds me of courses I grew up in Rhode Island with you know undulations and you know having to hit drives and you know some tight driving holes it's it fits my eye, so there's uh, really I have no excuses. So hopefully I can get in the mix here. Awesome. Yeah. Billy, what do you think you've learned the last two years at sort of the big venues that you can, you know, such a good practice? With yeah, it, you know, you really got to drive the ball straight here. You know, keep it out of this, you know, this wispy rough that you know where you, where you really can't control the ball. So if you can do that, it's uh, you're at a big advantage. And then from there, you know, you have to be precise on where you where you where you hitting your birdie putts or your putts from? Um, you know, it's easy here to to play defensive putting. You know, if you get above the hole all day, versus you know if you have some some good looks, you can make some putts. So uh, I think that's what I've learned the most is that uh, uh, you know if I can drive it pretty straight, which I I'm okay there, that um, I can give myself some good opportunities. Get a, a top five in Canada in your last outing, first um, time of the season. Yeah. You know, I really, honestly, have been playing really well all year. Um, my my only hiccup was was in Seattle, which was which was weird because I've always played well there, uh, winning there back in '15, and then I think I finished third there last year, and then I came out after you know a three week break and and uh, just didn't have it the first day, played terrible. Um, then I get to Calgary where I've, where I've had success in the past, and uh, you know I just love the place, I love the course, and uh, you know I just you know. As, as you know, it's all about making putts, and a few went in in Calgary, which was nice, and, and that's what you got to do out here. These guys are so good, and you know the scores are so good um, that you have to get the, the putter rolling. And uh, when I when I do that, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> like Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, anytime you have success and under pressure, and you play well, and I played really, really some flawless golf coming down the stretch in Calgary on Sunday, and if I could have made a couple, you know, I might have had a chance. But uh, uh, all in all, yeah, you always, you, 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 can you, when you get under pressure, can you do it? You think you can, but until you do it, you know, you, you don't know. Even going from one week to the next, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to think about those that that good week in Calgary, and hopefully, I can continue it here. Well, you know, I've been a, an ambassador uh, with Ascension since the beginning. I think I was the first one, and uh, yeah, just to see what Nick and his his team has, has done is, is is unbelievably impressive, and to to see the fans here really embrace this tournament is what makes it. And then at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, uh, you know, you get these great charities that get uh, all this money from from us playing golf. I mean, it's pretty amazing that. Uh, this model has has been done on the PGA Tour for decades and decades, and billions of dollars have been raised for charity. And it's great to see that that St. Louis is part of that. You, you mentioned the fans. A lot of the pros that we speak to say that this is a, take them back to when they were yeah. on the regular PGA Tour because of how great the fans are. Yeah, it, it's um, you know, we have tournaments where where the PGA Tour plays in some cities, and it's just a different vibe because. You know, who you want to go see? You want to go see legends or you want to go see the, the young stars? And places like Atlanta and Houston, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. But when you come to places where the PGA Tour doesn't play every year, places like here in Madison and next week in Sioux Falls, those places are, are electric for us. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I mean, my analogy would be, hey, we're going to play a pickup basketball game, you know, in, a, in an empty arena. And then all of a sudden we're going to play a pickup basketball game and there's 20,000 people watching you. It's a little different and it's fun. You know, and that's what we all grew up doing 
and that's what we love to do is entertain and play well in front of fans. So here in St. Louis is definitely, we feel like it's a regular event and it's got some energy and, uh, you know, we all feed off of that. So did the other golfers, like, I know you got a lot of stuff, but hey, St. Louis is one, we got to beat. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, uh, he, just like Madison, just like next week in Sioux Falls, where, you, where, where the, the tour doesn't go to, like I said. And to come here and see, you know, people watching it is, is huge. You know, it's, it's not friends and family like some tournaments are, it seems like. This is a, a real PGA, like a real PGA Tour event, and, and all the players love it. You know, in 2015 to 16, you know, they, you know okay, are we going to go to a shorter putter? You know, his game's definitely going to probably slip, and he got better. And, uh, you know, what he has done in his career to, to beat Hale Irwin's record, that, which I thought would never be broken, is, is just simply amazing to his gut, his mindset, his preparation. I mean, he is a machine, and he has no weaknesses. And it's, uh, it is simply amazing at his age what he's doing. A couple of years ago, he, he, in, at War Kills, he turned 64. And, you know, the first round of the tournament, and I said, hey, you know, good luck today. Maybe you can shoot your age. Well, he did. He shot 64. He, he, he shot his age the first day of turning 64. I mean, it's, he's just... Uh, Simply amazing, and, and everybody shakes their head, and um, and he's a nice man too. It's hard to to not like him. And Billy, as you know, we're a baseball town here, and you just have this incredible association with MLB. Tell me about that, and then your love of the game. You know, I've been a baseball fan my whole life. Uh, I got to meet the brass at, at MLB, and I was getting ready to get on the PGA tour, and they asked me if I had a hat deal, and I said no, and the guy said, well how much and I gave a number and he said done three-year deal and then I was like Dee, man, maybe I should ask for more money but uh, I'm in my tenth year with him and uh, it's it's simply amazing that uh, um, you know the crossover from you know hey we're playing golf here but you know I'm representing a you know baseball you know the, the, the whole MLB is really cool and I get to see some good games so it all works out Right. I, um, I, I only watched very little of the, of the Walker Cup because I was a little busy being Nurse Billy back in Rhode Island with my wife's surgery of a, of a torn Achilles. But uh, the memories that I remember that, you know, you're a young kid uh, to experience, to experience my Walker Cup was at Sunningdale. It was, it was an unbelievable experience with the team, with the, with the, our captain was Fred Ridley. Um, you know, we had older players and younger players, and we meshed well, and we, we just had, a, you know, the, the experience of it is just amazing. And to, to see these kids pull it together and, and to come back the way they did and, you know, the fun, you know, the smiles, you know, I just like, I hope all those kids turn pro and have great careers and they continue to smile and continue to enjoy the, the love of the game, which, you know, sometimes we don't see. As far as the Ryder Cup, um, I thought before the picks, I really thought that um, it, it, this was going to be the easiest chance for the U.S. team to win. And then Luke Donald picked his six guys, and, and now I look on paper and I go, man, this is going to be a nail-biter, just like everyone is, and especially not winning over there since 1993. Um, you know, they, they have got a, a stronghold on this. but. Chemistry is huge, and over the, all the years of watching the Ryder Cup and almost making the team a couple times, um, and, and looking at professional sports teams, you know, what makes a team win the World Series or a Super Bowl versus a team that doesn't? And it's, you know, do you like each other? Do you have that chemistry? Do you have that? And it really looks like that, that Zach Johnson's done a wonderful job of picking who he picked, and uh, because he's looking at matchups, he's looking at chemistry really I mean it was it's it's all about that for him and 
and I think they're in the right direction for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, everybody will. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Billy. Thank you.